In this video, we're going to be adding and subtracting radicals. Um, there's only a couple of things we got to keep in mind when doing it. So I'll write the rules first, and then we'll do a bunch of examples. In order to add or subtract, really just adding is, or subtracting is really just adding the opposite, so it's not really any different for either one. Two things have to be true, though. One, is that this thing called the index has to be the same. Um, so for example, if I have, let's just draw a little example here. Let's say that I had a cube root, and I was trying to add that to something that was a square root. I could not add or subtract these because my index, this number right here, is not the same. So in order to add or subtract, my index has to be the same. So now, so far, I could be adding these things because they both have an index of 3, or they're both cube roots. Um, the index and something else, though, has to be true. The radicand. And the radicand is the number that's underneath the radical. So let's say that I had, uh, let's say I had x, and I had 8. Well, because this number underneath the radical sign, it's called the radicand, because it's not the same, I could not add these together. Even though my index was the same, my radicand's not the same. They both have to be true. If I put an x over here, now I have the same radicand, I have the same index, I could add these together. Now when I add these together, I'm not adding any part of my radical. What I'm really adding is this coefficient, this number right here in the front. Um, I add or subtract that coefficient. So right now, there's kind of an invisible 1 in front of them. So if I added these together, I would get uh, 2 cube roots of x. So we treat the radical like a, uh, like a term. Um, if I were to add 1x plus 1x, I wouldn't do anything with the x, I would just add my coefficient and say I had 2x's. So this works similarly. Um, I don't do anything with my term, I just add my coefficients, or subtract depending on what type of math this is. Um, if I had 3 cube roots of x plus 2 cube roots of x, well then now, how many cube roots of x do I have? I have five cube roots of x. All right, so in order to add or subtract radicals, two things have to be true. Index and radicand have to be the same. And then I can add or subtract the coefficients. Coefficients. All right, so let's do some examples. Um, that's probably the easier example you'll see is that our index and radicand are already the same. It starts to get more difficult when we have to simplify first in order to get our index or radicand to be the same. So we'll do a little bit of both. Here we go. I want to add two square roots of three. I want to add that to four square roots of three. So again, this is on the easier side. Check to make sure your index is the same. I'm doing square roots for both of them, so good on there. Check to make sure the radicand is the same, that number underneath the radical. I have threes in both of them, so that's good. I can go ahead now and add, because that's the type of math I'm doing. I can add their coefficients. So two and four give me six. So now I have six square roots of three, and that's my final answer. Let's try another one. Let's say I have negative 5 cube roots of x. I'm going to add that to 2 cube roots of x. So check for the index. I'm doing cube roots for both of them. Check for the radicand. We'll have x under both of them. So I can go ahead and combine their coefficients. Since I have a negative 5 here and a positive 2, when I combine that, I get negative 3. 
and we keep our terms the same. So negative three cube roots of x is my final answer. All right, let's start to get into some more challenging stuff here. Let's let's do an example where we have to simplify first. So if I have the square root of x to the fifth plus 5x times the square root of x to the third. If I try and add these right now, I can't. Even though I have the same index, they're both square roots, I don't have the same radicand. So what we need to do here is simplify first and see if we can get our radicands to look the same. Well, if I take the square root of x to the fifth, I always suggest if you need to factoring all the way down to prime factors, so x to the fifth is really x times x times x times x times x times x. Times x. We'll leave the 5x outside. We're taking the square root of x cubed. Well, that's x times x times x. So since we're taking square roots, I want to take out pairs. So I'm going to circle that pair, cross it off, write one of them on the outside. Circle this pair, cross it off, write one of them on the outside, and I multiply things. I take out of radicals, and I'm still left with a x under one radical there. So let's do the same thing over here. Circle a pair, take it out, put it on the outside. So on the outside here, I have 5x times x, and I still have an x under the radical. Let's simplify in the front here. x times x is x squared. Over here, I have 5x times x. That's 5x squared. So now let's see what's going on. I have the same index still. Now I have the same radicand. So what I can do is I can combine the coefficients. Well, since I'm combining like terms here, they both have a square. And I can go ahead and add them together. I really have 1x squared here. And if I add that to 5x squared, I get 6x squared. And I keep the square root of x, and this is my final answer. So occasionally, you will have to simplify first in order to add. Get those radicands to be the same, get your index to be the same, and then go ahead and add or subtract. Let's do another example. Getting crazier still. Uh, the cube root of x cubed y z. And I try and add that to the cubed root of 8x cubed yz. Alright, so, so far I have the same index, but I don't have the same radicand, so we'll do exactly what we did in our last example, simplify first, and then see what happens. So if I take out cubes, again, you could factor all the way down to prime factors if you need to, but I can recognize that x to the cubed is a perfect cube, so I can take the cube root out. So I take 1x out. Um, I can't do anything with xz, because I'm taking cube roots, so they gotta stay there. Look at the other one. 8 is a perfect cube. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so I could take out a 2. x cubed is another perfect cube. I'll take out an x, and I have to leave y and z alone. Keep that cube root around them. So now, what do I got here? Oops, what did I do over here? I took out the x and I left behind the y, z. There we go. So now I have the same radicand. I have the same index. So I can go ahead and add their coefficients. Well, I can add the coefficients because they're like terms. They're both x's, so I have a 1x and a 2x. If I add those together, I get 3x. And I keep everything else as is. Cube root of y, z. And that's my final answer. All right, let's see if we can get one more example in here. What happens if I have more than one term? Really not any different. Let's have the cube root of 54. We'll try and add that to the cube root of 40. And we'll add that to the cube root of 16. So again, you got to get it down to where we have the same index. Well, we already have the same index. We've got to get the same radicand. So in order to do that, we simplify first. Let's see if we can get some cube roots out of 54. Um, looking for cubed roots. Cube roots are 1. That doesn't help us simplify, though. 
8 is the next cube root. Does 8 go into 54? No. Uh, 16, no. 27 would be the next cube root, 3 cubed. Uh, 27 goes into 54 twice. So if I factor it into 27 times 2, then I can take the cube root of 27 out, which is just 3. So 3 goes on the front. And I still have the cube root of 2. Let's look at 40. We said that 8 was a cube root. And 8 is a factor of 48 times 5. I could take the cube root of 8 out, put it on the front. That's just 2. And again, a cube root of 16 is 8, so 8 times 2, take out the cube root of 8 again, 2 on the front, left with the cube root of 2. So take a look here. We simplified as much as we possibly could, and we didn't end up with the radicand being the same on each of our terms, but that's okay. We can only combine our like terms, so we're going to leave this guy alone. We can't do anything with him, but we can combine these two. Because they have the same index and they have the same radicand, I can combine or add their coefficients. 3 plus 2 is 5. So 5 cube roots of 2. And we got to leave 2 cube roots of 5 alone. We can't do anything with it. We can't add these together. We can't simplify anymore. So this ends up being our final answer. Alright, so again, in order to add or subtract, we need the same index. We need the same radicand, and as long as we have that, we can go ahead and try and combine their coefficients, as long as they're like terms. If we can't, we can only simplify and rewrite everything in its most simplified form, just like in this example. All right, good luck adding and subtracting radicals.